Hi, welcome to today's video. My name is Paul. So today um, I'm going to go over very quickly this idea of print on demand. So print on demand is something that artists can use to maybe earn a little bit of extra uh, cash every month. So basically what is print on demand? If you're completely new to the idea, it's pretty straightforward. So there are a number of companies out there um, what happens is you can upload images or photographs, artwork to those companies and they will then manufacture products with your images printed onto them. So the kind of products that we're talking about are things like t-shirts, phone cases, coffee mugs, uh, lots of different things. Okay, so you can see on the screen that there are three different uh, groups or people or entities that are interacting um, in this print on demand. So you have the print on demand company, you have customers or potential customers, and then you have the artist or the designer. And the way in which those three groups can interact will uh, give rise to different business models that you can use. And with print on demand, there's basically two main business models that you can choose from. So the first business model, pretty straightforward. Um, as the artist, you don't have to do very much. All you do is you create designs and then you upload those to the print on demand company's website. And from an artist's point of view, that's it. That's all you have to do. Um, the customers then can go to the print on demand company's website and they can see different designs and different products and they can choose something that they like and buy it. The print on demand company then manufactures the product they ship it out to the customer. And if there's any problems, um, they deal with all of the customer care as well. Um, every time one of your designs gets sold, uh, you'll earn a small royalty. Okay, so then the other business model. So on the diagram, you can see the arrow between the customers and the print on demand company has disappeared. And now we have just the arrow between the customers and the artist. So small change on the diagram, but it's quite a big change in the real world. What it means is at one end, at the sort of back end of everything, it's still the same. You, the artist, the designer, you're still creating designs and you're still uploading those to the print on demand company's website. The main difference now is that website is not a marketplace. It's only a platform. So the customers cannot go to the print on demand company's website to buy uh, products with your designs on them. So in that case, how are they going to buy things? Well, you, the artist, the designer, you're going to have to set up uh, some kind of online store. So it could be an Etsy shop. It could be a Shopify website, a WooCommerce. It could be your own website. It doesn't matter as, it, as long as it has some sort of online shop that the customers can go to and buy things. So this second model is requires a little bit more work then from the artist. Okay, there are about five large print on demand companies. Um, I've divided them into two groups. The top three use the first business model the easier business model. And then the second, the last two, they use the second business model. The second business model, if you're familiar with drop shipping, um, it's basically drop shipping. Okay, so the first group then, uh, the first one you already know about Amazon, specifically a branch of Amazon called Merch by Amazon. They're basically a print on demand service. Then you have Redbubble and Teespring. Now those three, they all use that first business model, but they're not exactly the same. So Amazon, you don't just create an account and start uploading images. You have to go through an application process and it can take uh, quite some time to be approved and not everybody gets approved. Um, people do get rejected from it. There are plenty of uh, blog posts and YouTube um, videos out there 
where people try and give you ideas how what you should write in your application to increase your chances of success. And then we we'll move on to the third one, Teespring. So Teespring, there's no application process. You basically create an account and start uploading images. And Teespring has a marketplace. It's using that first business model. But if you create the account and you upload some images and you go to Teespring's marketplace, you will not be able to find your images or your designs. Because Teespring has this uh, mysterious thing that they call a trust score. So the trust score, you will not be able to see what your trust score is. Uh, you don't know if it's going up or going down or not moving. But your trust score has to reach a certain level before Teespring will allow your designs to appear on the marketplace. So when you're starting out, that's a bit of a problem because how will anybody buy your designs if they don't see them? And in order to improve your trust score, you have to sell things. But of course you can't sell things unless people are seeing them. So it's that sort of catch 22 thing. So with Teespring, the sort of trick is that the first five to 10 sales that you make, you're going to have to find the customers from somewhere yourself. You're going to have to direct them to the shop front that you've created on Teespring. And then hopefully some of those people will buy things. And once you get up to sort of eight, nine, 10 sales, you'll probably find then that your designs do start to appear on Teespring's marketplace. But initially you will have to do a bit of work yourself. Then the third one is probably the easiest one to get started with is Redbubble. Redbubble, there's no application process and there's none of this um, trust score nonsense that you get with Teespring. Redbubble, you just create an account and you start creating designs and uploading those designs. The one problem with Redbubble is the competition. Because there's uh, virtually no um, initial hurdles that you have to get over, it means everybody is trying to uh, sell things on Redbubble. So you'll find that there's a huge amount of competition. Okay, so then the second group, the last two, and this was the second business model. Um, where you have to set up your own website, for example, or an Etsy shop. And those two companies, the two main companies for that um, business model are Printful and Printify. Again, there's plenty of blog articles and YouTube videos that compare these two companies. Um, they have slightly different range of products and some people say that the quality differs between them. But if you're interested in that, then go off and do some research, find out which company is going to work best for you. Okay, so just sort of sum up then some of the pros and cons of the two models. So model one is easier to set up. Basically just create designs and upload them onto the website and that's it. However, you probably make less money with the first model, especially if you're trying to make money through Redbubble. Redbubble, if you sell a t-shirt, you're only going to make maybe two or three dollars. Um, that's before tax. And Redbubble has a minimum sort of level that you have to reach before you can withdraw any of your earnings. And that level is 20. So it's going to be 20 dollars, 20 euros, 20 pounds, whatever currency you're using, you have to make 20 of them before Redbubble will allow you to make a withdrawal. So if you're only selling, say, stickers and the occasional t-shirt, uh, it could take months before you can actually get to a point where you can withdraw money. Another big problem with this first model is you don't have any connection with the customers. Uh, they're not your customers. They're going to the Redbubble site or the Teespring or Amazon. And that's where they're buying their t-shirts with your designs. But the customers don't know 
probably don't know that it's your design and they maybe even don't care that it's your design um, so you don't have any connection then you're not making a connection with the customer and you know if you're trying to build a career as an artist or designer um, illustrator anything like that you kind of have to build a brand for yourself um, you have to make your name uh, known in the world sort of thing that's where you're going to get more attention more customers and you have a better chance of actually financially surviving as an artist that way this first business model will not help you to do that um, just because there's no connection between you and the customers okay so that's a big disadvantage of the first model but there is one more positive with the business this first business model and that is marketing you really don't have to worry too much about marketing the company like Redbubble or whatever they're going to go out well especially Redbubble they're going to go out and do the marketing for you and Redbubble is actually very good at marketing so then model two um, again some pros and cons so the first one it is more difficult to set up now I say more difficult it's not actually difficult it's just the first one is so easy that the second model seems more difficult but actually you can set it up in quite a short space of time especially if you're using something like say Etsy and you're connecting it up to say Printful or Printify you'll find they have an API everything set up you just you have to put in some web addresses and things but it shouldn't take long to set it all up another advantage of the second model is you can potentially earn more it's not guaranteed but potentially you could earn more and that's partly because you have more control over um, the whole process of selling and marketing the other advantage of this model is that this time the customers are your customers they're not Printful or Printify's customers they're your customers so you're going to be able to build that connection that bond uh, with your customers so then the last point for the second business model and this is again a negative point in this case you have to do all of the marketing um, Printful or Printify will not do any marketing on your behalf you have to find all of the customers so if you don't have an online following to begin with you're going to have to go out and try and find customers from somewhere for example maybe Facebook ads you could use social media like Instagram for example but it takes a long time to build up and if you use something uh, that you have to pay for like Facebook ads that probably will work faster but if you're selling things like t-shirts you'll find that you might have to spend ten dollars to get one face one customer from your Facebook ads and you're maybe only making six or seven dollars profit on a t-shirt so actually you're losing overall okay so if I was going to sum up I would say if you already have an online following through YouTube or Instagram or whatever and you like the whole idea of the business side the entrepreneurial side of things then the second business model is probably a good fit for you if on the other hand you don't like all of this entrepreneurial stuff you don't have an online following but you want to just create uh, designs then the first business model is probably better for you and in that situation if you're that kind of person one other way in which you can potentially make some income is maybe to sell your skills your art skills your design skills because there are people entrepreneurs who are using maybe the second business model who cannot who are not very creative and can't create their own good designs if you can somehow do a deal with them they can take care of the business side of things and you can take care of the creative side of things and that's probably that would probably be a good match 